SMT Nation, we back. Nation, ever wonder why T-Mobile is is finding so much success? You ever think about how like it seems like their growth just doesn't stop? They have a really good process. They have a really good formula that's working for them. They're not going to rock the boat. This article kind of highlights what they've been doing and how they've been taking share from Verizon and AT&T in a very specific way and a very specific place. So covered here in this article, it's dated from today, the time of this recording, May 23rd, 2023. It's from Telecompetitor. Link for the article will be in the description as the conversational piece of today's video. Also in the description is going to be the real SMT Buy Me Coffee link. You want to support your creators? Love the content on the channel? Support us. Buy us a coffee. The link is in the description. Also, you can consider supporting us by supporting our partner, Mint Mobile. The link in the description, specific and unique to our partner link for the SMT YouTube channel, will help you unlock savings. And it's going to give you a great deal on your wireless service. And it'll be helping out the channel. Use it. Check them out. We stand by them, offering great value on all their plans. Mint Mobile, our partner. Okay, so what is T-Mobile doing and how are they doing it? It's actually really, really simple. T-Mobile is entering markets where in the past they haven't really had the ability to compete for customers there. It's been a number of things. One problem has been a lack of retail presence. Another problem has been a lack of, I don't know, would you say like network competence? So they haven't been competitive in retail because they haven't existed and they haven't existed in retail because they haven't had the network. Well, now they have both of those things. They're addressing both, right? They got a bigger network through the T-Mobile acquisition of Sprint along with their own native build. And then with their kind of retail program, uh, they've expanded to more places where they can open stores in what are referred to as smaller markets in rural areas. That's what T-Mobile calls them. And kind of a description of this is that T-Mobile is seeing a lot of the success in what they call small markets in rural areas that still have a substantial amount of the U.S. population, about 40% of the U.S. population. Okay, so since 2021, you know, T-Mobile's market share in these types of markets, previously in the low teens, they've now reached 16%. So in just a couple of years, they've increased substantially, and their target is to get to 20% by 2025. Folks, they're going to get there, and there's a reason why, and they'll probably surpass 20%. Now, T-Mobile's definition for small markets and rural areas includes 775 of these places. All right, now, they call these places, they, or they put them into two categories, what they refer to as license to win, which is markets that have the most potential, and license to play markets that also have potential, but not as much. The license to play is going to be places where the network is meh, and the retail isn't really all that much there. So license to win markets, that's where you take your branding, that's where you take your marketing, your distribution, what Seaver calls the whole formula for winning. And that's where they win, and that's where customers take. Two-thirds of the markets that fall into either license to play or license to win T-Mobile has market share in the mid-30s. That's balanced. Verizon, AT&T, and T-Mobile, if you split those into thirds, that's where T-Mobile is. So in license to play or license to win, T-Mobile is now a real player. Of course, all of this namely focused on mobile service, but T-Mobile is finding success with 40% of their gross net ads coming from the home internet because these are... Previously, customers who have been, you know, having to deal with slow DSL service, barely usable speeds, unreliable when the weather's bad, the service is bad. Maybe they've been using a satellite. It's a slam dunk. If T-Mobile's got an upgraded, newly built or modernized site, they can take those customers too. This is what T-Mobile's doing. They're going in places where people are dying for a new competitor. T-Mobile comes in with national pricing. Prices that beat both Verizon and AT&T, and they can offer them a deal on fixed wireless access, which is probably going to beat their DSL and satellite providers. This is what T-Mobile is doing. It's easy. All right. So maybe, maybe T-Mobile is not going to do much moving forward in the urban. You know, what they have is, is what they're going to have. 
right? Maybe that maybe that's it. Maybe they've topped out. You know, they'll they'll compete fiercely for business and they'll always be in play, but this is going to be their new frontier. Right? This is where the T-Mobile growth is going to come from for the rest of this year and then probably next year and the year after. The only trouble is is AT&T is now officially doing fixed wireless access, right? So they can kind of maintain the DSL, you know, decommissioned customer. And of course, Verizon is about to really increase the bandwidth and the build of their C-band across the nation. That's going to probably rain on T-Mobile's parade just a little bit. But they should still be able to compete just fine. Have no worries. T-Mobile's going to continue to grow. And I'm not sure if anybody can really do anything about it. Right? There might be some other operators who can get some some customers, but T-Mobile's going to take their share. That's for sure. Don't expect anything to change. It's T-Mobile's game when it comes to growth. That's their specialty. But what do you guys think? Sound off in the comment section below. You all the voice of the people, the SMT Nation. Let your voice be heard.